Why do I do things the hard way? Okay, I goofed up, but I think we have a bigger problem. Ah, except for that one. But the problem with this project is that those final details, they're what's gonna make this room awesome, and I don't have them yet. In case you didn't see the last video, I completely reorganized the shop. Basically, I took all of the woodworking stuff and I pushed it over to this side because that side is gonna become a clean room. The camera right now is standing in what's going to be the door going into the clean room. And by clean room, I mean it's a room that basically needs to have 3D printers, vinyl cutters, electronics, anything that I don't want in my office but also doesn't need to be in a wood shop. The space is about 20 inches long, about 11 feet wide, so a one car garage pretty much. We're gonna completely close it in and make it look like it's from Tron. I mean, that's just kind of a goal. So I decided if I was gonna be making a room and putting a bunch of stuff in it that was technology heavy with lots of LEDs, I may as well take it all the way and make it look like it's from Tron, or specifically Tron Legacy. If you know me at all, you know that I love the Tron movies and I love the aesthetic that goes with it. So we're gonna to try to take some of those visual elements and put them in this room, but first, we have to build some walls. People always think this is for roofing because it has coiled nails, but I promise you this is a framing nailer just happens to have a coil. All right, let's talk about this short wall that I just made. I made this short section of wall to go right here. It's gonna go all the way up against the wall. And that's because this section is actually gonna have a removable area. The short explanation is I have a really large 3D printer that's gonna go in there. Like it's so big that it won't fit through a normal doorway, which means I could put in double doors which is kind of silly, because I don't know that I'll ever take it out, or I could make a section of wall that's removable just in case. And so that's what I'm planning on doing. My plan is to frame up this entire wall, but have a four foot section here that is not attached to the bottom. It's just attached to the side pieces. And then all of this wall is gonna get covered in plywood. So if I ever need to open this up to get the big printer out or something else big in, I can just unscrew some things, take off some panels, and then I've got a nice big temporary opening. Now, you may notice that I'm using two by threes for this wall instead of two by fours. That's mostly to save money, but also just so the wall's not quite so thick. None of these are gonna be load bearing, so two by threes are just fine. You also may notice that the spacing in between the studs is a lot bigger than normal. Usually if you're hanging drywall, you wanna have the studs 16 inches apart on center, and that makes it a lot easier to hang the drywall. You can overlap pieces. You've got the ends always landing on a stud. I'm gonna be doing plywood, and so I don't really care where the studs are, I just need there to be a structure. And so that plywood on the outside is gonna be able to screw into these things just fine, and I'm still making sure that the ends of the plywood pieces are always gonna land on a stud. It's super simple framing, but the wall's in place. Even without supports that go across it, it's gonna be plenty strong because, again, I'm covering the whole thing in plywood. I've got it screwed up into the beam that runs across here, but I also have to screw it down into the concrete. Now, there is a really cool way to do this. There's something called a ram set, which is basically like a shotgun shell thing that shoots an anchor down into the concrete. That would be really cool, and it was tempting, but I decided to use screws instead so I can take it out just in case I need to. I went ahead and framed this wall up and the only difference about it is that it has an opening for a door. That's pretty simple. This one is gonna be a lot more complicated and that's because it's gonna have kind of a weird window. Yeah, maybe weird is a strange way to put it. It's gonna be a Tron inspired window, which means we probably need to take a minute and actually talk about the whole Tron look of this room. When I was a kid, the first Tron movie came out and it blew my mind. The whole idea was that this programmer gets sucked into the computer and then has to be a player in the video games that he helped write. And there's something about that whole idea and the whole look of that movie that just, it really caught me. I really loved the whole idea of being able to go into like a micro world, something that's inside our own world. But even past that, the movie broke all this new ground for designs of characters and vehicles, and the way the environment looked. It was something totally new. And then like 30 years later, they decided to make a sequel to it called Tron Legacy. And whether you like that movie or not, 
it pushed the visuals to an entirely new level. I mean, they completely blew out the design for everything, and being in the computer is the perfect scenario for that because there are no physical limits. You can have things that don't make any sense, that don't have to actually work in the real world, and that made for some super cool architecture and vehicles and just the way things look in general. Now, of course, if they design stuff that can't exist in the real world, I can't make it either, but I can pull some ideas from it. I can pull some visual stuff just to make the inside of this clean room feel inspired by, feel like it should be in the Tron world somewhere. And that's gonna start with this window. So the general look and feel of the whole clean room is gonna be just like black and neon LEDs everywhere and like strips of light, things that highlight edges and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm not even sure what all it's gonna look like, but I wanna be able to see it from out here, which means we need to put a window right there. And that window needs to kinda have the whole Tron vibe. So we're gonna start here with one of these shapes. Bigger at the top or the bottom, some rounded corners, a shape that doesn't really make sense in the real world, but it's gonna look like it's from Tron. Now, another thing about this, though, is that I want the window to kind of react. I want it to glow a little bit, maybe make it an indicator of something. I'm not exactly sure yet, but what we're gonna do is etch some lines in this, because when you take plastic and you etch it, then if you shine light from the edges, all of that etching will glow and that's totally gonna look like Tron. But before we can get to any of that fun stuff, we actually have to have a place for the window to go. So I'm gonna frame up the wall with rectangular pieces and build it in place, and then kinda just build into the shape that we need. I don't really have a plan. As I'm finishing up this room, I keep getting distracted because I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking about what I want the room to be and to look like, and I've got this vision for lots of animated lights and the room to kind of be alive like you're inside the computer. All that's gonna be done with an Arduino. And if that's something you don't know anything about or you immediately check out because you don't understand it, I would like to help you understand it. We have an online course called Arduino for Makers and it starts you at the very beginning. You don't have to know how to code. You don't have to know anything about electronics. We teach you all that stuff and build you up so that you can build some projects using sensors and motors and lights and lots and lots of other stuff. It feels like a superpower to level up your projects and make things that are interactive, and I would love for you to get that feeling. Do me a favor, hit the link down in the description, go watch the first few videos for free, and if you're interested, there's a discount code down there so you can jump into the course. I would love to see you over there, and I hope it's helpful. Now, there is a reason that I covered the opening with plywood, and that reason is because I don't really know what I'm doing. I have an idea, but I think it'll make more sense if we look at it from the backside. Okay, so my plan is to do all this work inside the wall. Basically, I'm gonna map out the shape inside this existing framing, then I'll cut that out with a jigsaw. Once I've got the opening, I can use it as a template to trace that opening onto a piece of plexiglass. I'll then offset that trace to make the plexiglass the same shape but a little bit bigger and I'll cut that out. Then I can come back and add framing inside this wall to match up with the opening so that the whole thing is reinforced. Then I can set the plexiglass in place and then eventually we'll be adding LEDs to those edges. So the window is held in place temporarily and I've got the shape traced and the offset traced but I'm gonna have to pause on that because it's dawning on me how much work I have to do and how little time I have to do it. The deadline is self-imposed, but if I take too long on this video, then that makes the next video have to be rushed or late, and I don't really wanna do that. So, I'm gonna have to skip ahead a little bit, and I already have a tad. I added plywood to the outside of these walls, and it looks really good, although I might end up painting it later, we'll see. But we really need to focus on the inside of this room, and specifically, the ceiling. The ceiling in here has a lot going on. There's AC ducting that sticks in through the wall. We've got plumbing along the back. We've got plumbing that crosses that. We've got plumbing that goes over there. There's a lot of stuff and we have to work around every single bit of it. My plan in here is to add a drop ceiling. I did this in my home office, works great, holds lights, and it's a way to kind of hide all the utility stuff but keep it accessible. So that's the plan in here and I want it to be as high as possible so I don't lose headroom, but I do have to work around all these utility things that are hanging down. That means I need to box them in. So I'm gonna build some simple plywood boxes to give me flat edges around these utilities so that I can attach the track to for the drop ceiling. It's gonna make the drop ceiling way easier to do. And for the sake of time, we're gonna skip the boxes and jump right to the drop ceiling. I bought a kit to do the drop ceiling, and you can buy all the pieces individually if you want to, but the kit actually is gonna 
work fine for this size space. And I did get black track and black tiles, so the ceiling should just kind of disappear. This pack should make it even easier to do because it's got these joist hangers, which will simplify hanging all the pieces. Basically what you do is you take this track, this like L-shaped track, and you put it around the outside. Then you build a grid hanging down the middle, attached to the joist. And as long as the grid matches the size of your tiles that you're putting in, you're good to go. Plus, it comes with really detailed instructions, so you got everything you need. Okay, I goofed up. I was in a hurry and I ended up doing the ceiling grid incorrectly and it took me a long time to figure out what I did wrong. Then eventually I was able to take it down, redo it the right way. So the grid is fine, but I think we have a bigger problem. I mean, maybe it's not a huge problem, but I think it's time to recalibrate. When I design a project, especially something big like this, I usually get, I don't know, 70% through with details and I figure out how things work together and I get really far, far enough along that I can get started without actually having all of the final details in place. And usually that works out just fine. But the problem with this project is that those final details, they're what's gonna make this room awesome and I don't have them yet. The specific design of this room is what I'm talking about. How that window is gonna work and the lights that go around it and the programming that's gonna enable that and the lights that are gonna run around the room and that programming. I want the walls to be textural and have details. I don't even know exactly where all the tools are gonna go. There's a lot of stuff that still has to be decided past building walls and adding a ceiling. And this is a classic example of me biting off more than I can chew. And that's fine. But I wanna make sure that I give all those details the attention that they deserve. I want the video and the room to be good so that you are inspired and I'm happy with the results. So we're gonna have to change the plan for this video just a little bit. The original intent for this video was to have that room finished and have it lit and animated and in use at the end of this video. But if I do that, it's not gonna be very good and it's definitely not gonna be as good as I want it to be. So rather than trying to cram all of that stuff into one video, I think we need to change it and split it into two. So my new plan for this video is to get this space 100% ready to make it awesome. And by that, I mean, I want the ceiling finished with lights. I want the walls covered, painted black, ready to detail. I want everything ready to go with power in the places that it needs to be so that the next video can just be about making it awesome. We can focus on details, we can focus on programming and lights, and it actually gets me really excited. So the next step is to cover these walls with hardboard. So we've got a surface that we can paint black along with the concrete wall, and we have surfaces to add conduit and electrical in all the places that it needs it. So my first step is to actually get some light on the ceiling to make it easier to shoot in here because I'm about to paint this entire room black. So first off, we're gonna put these up in the ceiling and then we can cover the walls. That is really irritating. So it turns out the, the little holders for the wires that you need to put in here to safely keep the wire in place, they come in two different kinds. One is a press fit, and those are really hard to push into this flexible thin metal. So I would advise getting the other kind, which is the ones that have a screw on the back and they're easy to put in, easy to tighten. Do that instead of this. The walls are covered, except for this section right here. And that's because I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do the lighting and the stuff around the window, but I need to keep access here so that I can do that 
in the next video. So we're gonna leave that part uncovered. But everything else is covered up, which means we can move on to electrical. I'm just adding a few receptacles to an existing circuit. And to me, that's something I'm comfortable with. And I've got a friend who's a commercial electrician. He always checks my workout to make sure it's okay. But I have to recommend to you that you get a licensed electrician to help you with any of this stuff, whether it's adding lights or receptacles or circuits or switches or whatever you're doing, make sure you're doing it the right way because that is the safe way. The ceiling is done and black was absolutely the right choice. It looks super cool and it's gonna look awesome once the whole room is black, but before we can paint it, we gotta do the last thing that I've been kind of putting off until the very end and that is the door. Now, I bought a pre-hung door, which is right there. And that's basically everything about the door except the wall. It's the door, the hinges, the jam, the trim, everything you need. And as long as you have the right size opening, you can usually just kind of like clamp it around the wall, shim it, and you're good to go. Do you know me, I made it difficult. I could have put the door right there, which would give me the right size height for a normal 80 inch door. I could just make a hole right there and put it in, but there's reasons that I didn't. Instead, I put it right here, which is underneath the AC ducting. And that AC ducting causes this frame to come down a couple inches, which means I have to shorten the door. That's not a huge deal, but I made another choice that's gonna be an even bigger issue. When you buy a pre-hung door, Typically, it's made for a wall that is built with two by fours. So you've got the two by four, and then you've got drywall on each side of it, which adds another half inch and half inch. And so the jam is made to fit that, but I use two by threes, and I'm not using half inch drywall, which means my jam is too big. So yes, I could have bought the pieces for a door rather than a pre-hung door, but I didn't, which means I'm gonna take this one apart, cut down the parts that I need to, and try to put it back together around that frame and just make it work. Okay, so these pre-hung doors come in three separate pieces. You have the door, which is on the hinges, attached to the frame, which is actually two parts that are kind of a clamshell. So you can separate them, put them around the opening, squish them back together, and nail it all in place, and theoretically you've got a door. So I have to take all those apart so that I can cut them individually, but I did figure out that if I add a three-quarter inch piece of trim to my existing wall, I won't actually have to change the thickness and that's gonna make it a lot simpler. And one of the benefits of painting everything black on the inside of the room is you get to hide stuff like that. Hollow core doors are wild. Check this out, this is literally cardboard. It's just cardboard pieces glued between the two pieces of MDF on the outside. It's wild. Anyway, I'm gonna cut a piece of MDF to fill this space just to strengthen up the bottom a little bit. The door is in place. And so you know what that means. It means that you should go to shop.iliketomakestuff.com and buy this t-shirt, but it also means it's time to paint it black. Now this may not look that impressive. It's a black room, but it's a huge change from what was here before. And the coolest thing is it's a blank slate. As soon as I hit stop on this video, I'm gonna hit record on the next one to start making this place look awesome. And I hope you will join me. Hit the subscribe button and the bell and all that stuff so you don't miss it. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. To mess with it, if you wanna mess. It gives me a reasonable go po. Go <laughs> it used? How do I say that? Wow. <laughs>